basic weapon system for your FPS in the Gato engine. Let's jump into it. The first thing we're gonna do is create a weapon resource class. This is a custom resource that's gonna give us a custom data type for our weapons. We're gonna create a weapons folder within our assets folder. And then within this, we're gonna create a new scripts folder. And within that, we're gonna create our new weapon resource class. A resource allows you to create a custom data type within the Gato engine. And that script at its most basic is gonna have a bunch of export variables. First, we'll have a weapon name, which will be a string that you can name your weapon, then how much damage that weapon can do, the max ammo, the weapon model, which is what's gonna be loaded into our player controller so we can see it, and then the weapon position, which is where we load that relative to our camera. Now let's create a resource so you can see what this looks like. We'll go back to our weapons, folder, we'll create a new folder called resources. And within that, we're going to create a new resource and we'll call this our pistol weapon. Open that up. And in the inspector, you should see all of our export variables that we just created. So we have our weapon name, our damage, our max ammo, our model, which we'll have to load and create a new scene for in a little bit and our weapon position. The weapon resource does a couple of things. It allows you to easily expand what data is in your weapon. So right now we have a max ammo, we have damage, but what if you wanted to have different damage to say shields? Maybe a weapon does more damage to shields. You can add that as an export variable and have that for all of your different weapons and then load that in your, your weapon controller system or how we're gonna handle our, our firing. And it makes it really easy to customize and change it. Additionally, any weapon you create is going to inherit from this resource. So all the weapons have that same info. Now that we've created our weapon resource, let's create a weapon controller class that's gonna make sense of what we've just done. We'll create that, open that up. We'll add our class name. This could be weapon controller. And eventually this weapon controller is gonna have a lot more logic than it's gonna have today. But we're just worried about having a weapon resource that we've created and loading that so it goes into our player controller and we can see our weapon. So first we'll add a couple of export variables, the first being a current weapon. This would be the, uh, the weapon that you want to show up by default. And then another one for our weapon model parent. This will be the node where we place our weapon scene. We'll add a local variable for our current weapon model. This will hold our scene and then we'll head into our ready function. Now, when we start our game, we want whatever current weapon we have set up within our weapon controller to obviously load. We're gonna create a ready function and we'll check if we have a current weapon. And if we do, we're gonna run a new function called spawn weapon model. We'll have an error because we don't actually have that yet. So let's create that function. Within our spawn weapon model, we're gonna take our current weapon that we have set, that's our custom weapon resource. And we're gonna populate our current weapon model scene with the scene we set in our resource. If you remember, we have a weapon model export variable that's gonna load our custom pistol scene. That's what we're trying to get to. First thing we can do, if, if we're spawning a weapon model, we wanna check if we already have one loaded. If we do, we wanna get rid of that. So if current weapon model is not null, we wanna take our current weapon model and make it null by using Q free. If we do have a weapon model within that custom resource set up, then we want to take our current weapon model variable, instantiate that weapon model scene into that. Then we're taking our weapon model parent. In this case, it's going to be our camera 3D node. And we're going to add that scene as a child to the camera 3D node. Once we've loaded that scene, we're going to set the position of it using the position we created in our pistol resource. For right now, that's all we need for our weapon controller script. Let's add that to our player controller. We can add that to our components. We'll add that, do a weapon controller. And we have a couple of things we need to set. We need to set our current weapon. In this case, that's our pistol resource. And then we need to set what the model parent is going to be for our weapon. And that will be our camera 3D. The one thing we don't have is the scene for our pistol. I don't actually have a pistol, so we're going to create a really ugly gun. So let's add a new scene. This will be a 3D scene. You can use a, a node 3D as the parent, but using a mesh instance is, is just as good. So we'll do that. We'll call this a 
pistol weapon. And let's go ahead and save that. Put that within our scenes folder, create a new weapons folder for that, and pistol weapon. Now the sizing and how the weapon looks is totally dependent upon the game that you're working on. We're just going to add a, a really basic box here. Something that kind of is shaped like a, a, a gun in a way. We'll start with that. Something pretty basic. Once you have your scene set up, we can load that within our pistol resource. So we'll look for our pistol weapon, put that within our resource, and we can go ahead and run this. And let's see if our gun shows up. There it is. Now it's totally faced in the wrong direction. It's not rotated in the right way. So let's go ahead and fix that. Remember when you're in your player controller, your forward position here is your, your Z axis. And in this case, it's Z negative. Although because we're using a box, it doesn't really matter. So let's rotate this out and have it go along the Z. We'll play that again. And there we go. Now let's say you wanted to change the position of this pistol within the, the view. The way to do that is to go to your player controller. And because we're loading this pistol scene within our camera 3D node up here, let's go ahead and load that just to test this. We'll take our pistol weapon, we'll pop it into our player controller temporarily. And we already had some settings we used and that was a uh, 0.2, negative 0.2, negative 0.3. We're gonna copy that value, go to our pistol weapon, go to the transform and let's add that to the position. We'll paste our value and then go to our camera 3D and preview it. You should see your weapon scene there in the bottom right. And because we're using the preview, we're getting what that camera looks like whenever we play the game. And now we can adjust our position to maybe get it a little bit more where we want it. Maybe you want to be kind of off center. But let's say that's where we wanted it. Now, what we need to do is copy that position, go to our pistol resource and paste that into the resource. And we should now have that new position. So you can see how easy it is to make adjustments to your weapon and even with, you know, damage and ammo and max ammo, it's even easier. You just update those export values within the inspector and boom, you're done. And because we're using a resource for every weapon, means every weapon can have a different value, which is going to be extremely useful when we start doing our weapon switching. The source files for this episode are available on my website for members in my full Gato Engine FPS development kit. This kit contains every FPS mechanic we cover in my videos, and becoming a member is what really makes these videos possible. So thank you to all of the current members. You can also get the free starter kit if you're starting from scratch. Both of those links are in the description. I'm also working on my own FPS game, Children of Kronos. It's inspired by the classic FPS games of the 90s. It's got gravity manipulation, physics, and some modern enhancements as well. If you're interested, please check out the Steam page. Wishlist. I appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one. And until then, keep creating.